Today we're going to make a run to the hydraulic shop to get our hoses made. I'm going to have one of the power steering hoses modified, the air conditioning hoses made, and the fuel hoses modified. Let me kind of show you what I'm going to do with each one. Okay, in looking at the fuel lines, uh, this is the original OBS line and this is what attaches below the cab to the uh, fuel filter and the return line. I'm going to have them cut it right about here and put new line up to the intake manifold. And this is the what came off the Suburban. And I don't know if we're going to reuse this or not. I'm not sure yet because there is some wear on the fabric there and I'm not sure I want to use that. So if they have the correct fittings for the fuel rails, then I'll just get new uh, attachments there as well. That needs to be about 40 two to 44 inches long. Let's look at the other lines. Okay, for the power steering, this is a power steering cooler. It came off Suburban. And what I want to do is the, even though it's the low pressure side, this is the hose that attaches to the pump. So what I want to do, that took this off the original pump. And what I, what I want to do is connect it to this. And I could just use a hose clamp, but I'd rather use a press fitting such as this. So I'm going to have one of these put onto this attachment that goes uh, at the pump. It'll look a lot nicer. Then on the air conditioning, uh, this is the, the manifold that goes to the compressor. And what I don't like about it is it mounts on the compressor in this, this way. And the large line has to go in this direction to the accumulator. And this one goes this direction to the condenser. I wish they were reversed, but that's how it is. So because of that, I'm taking my original line that looks like this, and I'm going to have it, uh, this main line, this, this attaches to the accumulator. I'm going to have it cut right here and a new line made that goes directly to this manifold and goes straight in. Uh, the adapters I got from Dirty Dingo are a 90 degree and they will not work in this application. It just, it just is not a good fit. Uh, this is the line that comes from the condenser and I'm going to have them cut it right about here and have a new line again so that they'll both go straight on, however you want to look at it, be straight on and everything will fit better because the heater hoses land right about here. So I want everything to... Uh, be able to be routed in a way that it looks good and will be functional. And... Well, these are the new fuel lines, or should I say the modified fuel lines. These are the original ends that attach to the fuel filter and the return line below the cab. Uh, this is the uh, little bracket, snaps onto the lines and snaps into a bracket that mounts below the cab. Uh, they cut them where I wanted, welded in new bungs, and press fit these new lines, 3 8 and 5 16 uh, Continental lines made in the USA. And then where it mounts to the fuel rail at the manifold, uh, they were able to use my original ends to uh, snap on, and I've got the clips for those. And, uh, and it turned out really nice. I'm really happy with them. Uh, let's take a look at the other lines that we had made and then put them on. Here's my power steering cooler, and the line turned out really nice. I mentioned before this line going to the, the pump. I, think I meant the steering box. This goes to the steering box. Uh, it welded on very nicely. They uh, put a bung on it with this new hose. It's the same type of 300 PSI hose that the fuel lines are, and they replaced it all the way up to the actual cooler line, the metal line there. So it looks really nice. And at the same time, they replaced, they had to remove the uh, low pressure line here. So they put a new clamp on that, didn't charge me for it. And uh, it is ready to install. So we'll put that on in just a minute and see what it looks like. Now let's take a look at the AC lines. Here are the new AC lines. This is the original line, uh, at least the fitting up at the accumulator. And uh, they cut it where I asked, put on a new uh, a bung there has new hose all the way down with a straight fitting on it and the same way uh, coming from the condenser has a new line all the way down and the uh, 
new fitting is placed right here at the end. So at least I got my high side and my low side where they're accessible. Let's install the hoses and see what they look like when they are actually on the truck. Okay, now you can see what they look like on the truck. We've gotten some extra work done as well. Uh, because of replacing the lines, the condenser was in terrible shape and the accumulator uh, was too. So we've got a new accumulator we installed, uh, the new line, and it comes down and you can see what I mean about the lines crossing. I really don't like the way it does that, but there's no way around it. And my heater hoses are going to come off here. I'll have to play with them when the, when the time comes and see what I can do. Anyway, uh, the new line for the condenser, I've got the front end off the truck. It makes working on it much easier. Uh, let's see, we also installed the starter and below it the clutch slave cylinder and uh, the clutch slave line that runs around to the uh, master cylinder right here. And here's the power steering I'm just holding up because of course the port can't. And you can see how it looks where it attaches to the steering box. I really like that a lot better than uh, just having a press fit. I really like that a lot better. Uh, it looks good. It's got the high pressure line, even though it really doesn't need it, but it looks good and it's gonna be durable. A uh, little added feature, you may not have noticed, that is a driver's side battery box. I want it under the hood to look stock uh, for a Suburban and it's going to. I found this in a salvage yard, uh, complete with all the bolts on a, in a fender that was just laying around uh, for five bucks. Uh, let's take a look at what the fuel lines look like. Hard to see, but on top, they snapped right on, literally took seconds to install, and I got the factory clips to hold them in place. They run down, and I installed down here. These are two bolts that were coming through the firewall that hold the new gas pedal in place. And I used those to attach a couple nuts and some uh, loom protectors to support those lines and keep them from flopping around and uh, keep them away from anything sharp. And let's look underneath. Okay, here are the lines underneath. They attached the fuel filter and the uh, return rail easily. I used the factory bracket and a little uh, plastic uh, clip here that holds the lines in place. And they just go on up. There's, they don't make contact with anything. Uh, they're against the bottom of the shield. A little, a little bit of slack, they're not real tight. And you saw before how they're attached to with the bolts to support them so they won't flex around. One last item I wanted to point out is the charcoal canister. You know, this mounts on the front of the course support on the driver's side, and that wasn't going to work because of the driver's side battery box. So I'm going to leave the, this is the hose where the connection to it was. I'm just going to run a longer hose through the course support, through the fender, and I mounted it over here in place of the uh, coolant tank because it's been removed. We're not going to use that. We're going to use the uh, factory suburban uh, tank that mounts on the fender well. So that would leave that spot empty. So I made a couple little quick brackets uh, to mount that uh, in that spot. And I'm just going to run the, run the vacuum tubing through one of these small holes over here on the side, come in from the back, and uh, it'll, it should blend in real well. Well, that's about all I've got for you today. I just want to bring you up to speed on where we stand on the truck. Making progress. It's slow, but it is steady. We're not that far away from putting the front end back together. And uh, I do get my PCM back. It's been programmed. We'll probably start on doing the wiring harness in the next week or two. So until then, thanks for watching. I appreciate a thumbs up. It helps me to know you guys like what's going on so I can keep putting it out. And in the meantime, get out there and work on your truck. If I can do it, you can do it.